All right. Hello, Junior Nation. <laughs> Welcome to AmpUpThe88.com. It's the online destination for Junior Nation to amp up for the race each week. We've got fresh, new, exciting content, including our signature sweeps, uh, where you guys can log in and win a different Dale Junior autographed item every day. We've got exclusive new videos live from the 88 team in our off the track section. Uh, we've got our live Twitter feed from TJ Majors, the spotter for the 88 team. And best of all, we've got live chats. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had Dale Jr. Uh, last week, we had Lance McGrew. The turnout from Junior Nation was fantastic. And we're gonna bring those guys back a few weeks down the road. But um, next week, uh, I'll make a plug for that real quick. Uh, same time, same place, Wednesday. Uh, March 10th, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we've got David Bryant, the car chief for the 88 team. But the moment you've been waiting for, I'm Jeff on the Amp Energy team, and this week we've got Chris Heroy, yep. the um, lead engineer for the 88 team. So don't hesitate to enter your questions in on the screen, keep them coming, and uh, welcome Chris, you amped hey. up? Yep, I'm amped up. Excellent. Let's get some chat on. All right. Let's jump right into it. Jake Backer wants to know, how did you get the nickname Sunshine? Yeah, I figured that one was going to come. <laughs> uh, well, I was moving from California to North Carolina, and uh, within two days of being in the five shop, uh, Jeff Torrance and Daryl McDonald, you know, saw I had longer hair than this, and you know, I was surfing a lot in California, I was tan and whatever. They thought I looked like uh, Sunshine from Remember the Titans? Oh, excellent. You know, Ronnie Bass or whatever. So within days, you know, various other nicknames subsided and it was <laughs> Ronnie Bass yelled across the shop at every opportunity. And I didn't even see the movie. And so initially, I mean, everybody wants their nickname to be, you know, Bulldog or something. But, <laughs> you know, you kind of get picked what you get picked. So. Uh, I finally asked him, I was like, I was like, Jeff, you know, is this a good nickname or not? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, it's good. You know, he comes in, he wins the, ch you know, wins the championship for him. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's not a bad nickname. So I was like, all right, well. Good deal. We'll let it ride. But yeah, that's where, you know, Sunshine or Shine came from. Yeah, so. they call you Shine for short. Yeah, good. a lot of Shine. People, my family comes to the racetrack and it's like, it's Chris there. And people are like, there's no Chris here. So. Right. <laughs> so oh, excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I thought it was because you, you were always so happy and positive. And I mobile. try to be the happy guy. You know? Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, well, Caring Angel eighty eight wants to know who is harder to please, Rick Hendrick or Dale Junior. <laughs> well, uh, they're both you know really driven to win, and they both put that above any, everything. So, um, it's pretty comparable. I mean, if you if you're making one happy, the other's going to be happy. So. Good. That's really how it works. Good deal. Edward Nash wants to know, do you recommend changes during the race? Uh, yeah, I try to. And, uh, you know, me and Lance and Chris Doherty, uh, I'll work on it, you know, during the race. We throw ideas back and forth and running simulations and, uh, you know, keeping track of what our teammates are doing and all that kind of thing. So we try to work on it, but it's Lance's call at the end of the day. So. Gotcha. Good deal. Gary Hill wants to know how many new cars you've built and are you building more? Uh, I don't have a lot of new cars. I've got a lot of old cars. Um, I'm working on right now a uh, 64 Galaxy that uh, my wife and I got for our, our wedding. And uh, wow. I've got an 88 Land Cruiser, which I drove for the majority of my time here, which made it to work only part of the time. So working on that quite a bit. I've got an old van that never seems to run right, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I, don't, I just got a pickup truck a little while ago. It was my first new car ever, so. Wow. It's been weird, you know. My attendance has skyrocketed, so <laughs> it's been good. Do you have a favorite one? I don't know. I'm really partial to the, uh, the Land Cruiser because uh, you know, I've driven one since I was growing up. That was my first car, so this is a different one, but, uh, you know, I've always had those, and I'm really kind of part of it. It's been sort of a tradition in my family for a long time, so. But yeah, and the Galaxy is obviously really special to me too because of the wedding thing. So yep. I mean, both both are you know I love them both. They're both they're one of those you're not not going to get rid of. They're here they're here to stay. Right, so. right. Well, you mentioned that you, you just got married. How do you yeah. balance your your home life and your um, you know, with, with being on the road all the time? Yeah, Junior Nation wants to know. Yeah, very carefully. <laughs> you don't you know. I try to really set aside time for you know my wife and our life at home. Yeah. And 
uh, with this new challenge with Junior, it's taking a lot of work and a lot of late nights and, you know, but she's really patient and understands, so that's good. cool. That's a good quality. Um, but, you know, you just, you just have to make an effort, you know, if you, if you just assume everything's going to be fine, then, you know, it won't be. So. Right, right, right. And it's, it's not hard. I mean, I enjoy it. It's my, you know, time outside of racing, so. Cool. It's, it's really a great thing. Good. I Love Racing wants to know, how did you get into NASCAR? Um, I used to work in open wheel out in California, and uh, I had a friend that got on with Jeff Gordon, and um, he was the engineer for Jeff for um, in you know, 2000 to 2004, something like that. And uh, he called me. I was engineering on a um, kind of IndyCar team in California, um, and there was an opening, going to be an opening on the five. And uh, you know, he was like, "You know, you're really going to get along with these guys. Like, they're great." You know, if you should you consider the move. So um, I kind of had a phone interview with Rex Stump, and it went well, and kind of worked for both teams, and then moved to Charlotte full time, and started with the five. Uh, I guess it would have been August of four. So excellent. Yeah, excellent. Amp Forever wants to know what do you like best about Hendrick Motorsports. I mean, it's just the team, you know. The, they've got the best people, you know. They put the best resources where they need to be, um, you know. It's just a, they really the the uh, the collaboration, you know, is just fan amazing. Yeah. And uh, you know, and it all comes from you know the example set up top with Rick. Sure. So, and that really filters down to the company. And I think you know, there's a lot of people happy to work here. You yeah. Know? It's easy to go to work when everyone kind of is happy to be here. And very I'd cool. say the vast majority are very happy to be here. So. Good. Good deal. TJ Miller wants to know, before working with Hendrick Organization, where were you at? Uh, I was with uh, Lynx Racing out of what, Infineon uh, Raceway, which was Sears Point. And uh, I was the data engineer for them for uh, about four years. Okay. So this is really you know, the only teams I work for is that and then here. So Excellent. it's kind of like the Bush Series for uh, Indy cars in California or whatever nationally. But. Cool. Dances with Cat wants to know <laughs> what are the pluses and minuses of having the five and eighty eight in one shop? Um, there's really not, you know, many minuses. I mean I it's really we used to run separate. You know, when I first got here it was the twenty five down the hill and then the five uh you know, in a different building. And combining them was, was difficult because everyone's got their ways and you know, these cars are so difficult to get sort of a direction and, you know, a philosophy that a lot of old philosophies die hard. So, you know, in combining them, it, you know, there's al always going to be, you know, friction. But I think in the last few years, that's really sort of gone by the wayside. And uh, there's really, it's only, the more we work together, it's only gotten better. So, you know, hopefully we can continue that. Excellent. Burning Rubber 88 wants to know. Is there a paint out you'd like to see? A paint out, like a paint scheme? Yeah, a paint scheme. Um, well, there's a few coming up that I've seen that Dale showed me that are pretty cool. So be, this is good. there's good stuff coming, but right. there's nothing specific. Like, good. I'm not a painter. Like, I just try to get a setup on it, and that's it. So. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> that's your thing. Yeah. Good deal. Uh, Nicholas Stamey wants to know, <laughs> how do you get your hair so soft and golden? <laughs> <laughs> Natural fruits and berries, really. <laughs> you know? That's what I stick to. But... <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> that sounds like uh, someone who knows you yeah. too well. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah this is a wig, actually. So <laughs> comb over wig. Yeah. That's why I wear the hat. In comparison <laughs> with that, I just I can't, I can't compete. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, I'd like to plug Nick. Nick also has fantastic hair. So oh, is that right? That's probably why he's asking. Good deal. <laughs> Caring Angel 88 wants to know, um, do you work close with Junior? If so, what's it like? Uh, I do work, uh, you know, as close as, you know, yeah, we work, we talk all the time about what's going on, so it's great. I mean, he's incredibly driven and sort of has his way about it, and, you know, he's he's just, he's, he's really passionate about winning and stuff, so it's, you know, it's definitely different um, from the previous drivers I've worked with, but, you know, he's in it for all the right reasons, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, he's easy to work for. Like, we seem to, we get along, and. I don't know if what he says makes sense, so that's good. Works pretty well. Excellent. 
Chris Race Fan wants to know, do you like Lance's nickname, McGrew Chief? And do you call him this? <laughs> McGrew Chief? No. <laughs> I don't call him McGrew Chief. It's Lance. <laughs> Lance. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it means it's a good nickname, I guess. Good. He's the crew chief, so. Sure. It makes sense. Right. All right. Jody Fletcher wants to know, Chris, how do you choose materials for the car's components? I mean, it's always a compromise between weight and strength and what NASCAR lets you use. They're pretty specific on uh, what's allowed to keep costs down and to keep some control over the sport. So we're really kind of in a box. There's a few components that are wide open and use whatever you want, but you always just play that weight versus, you know, strength game and, you know, what's necessary and what's not. So we've a whole R&D and design department that that's really, they dedicate themselves to that kind of thing with, you know, finite analysis and, uh, you know, all sorts of simulations and load cases and it's really, really, it's really a big part of what's going on right now with uh, these cars is to optimize everything, so. Excellent, big excellent. Part of that. DJ Kenny K wants to know, do you have a favorite amp flavor? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like the lemonade. Is this one we crack amps or what? Yeah. These are good. I don't know. Caffeine wins championships, right? So <laughs> that's why we amp it up. Good deal. Um, Eilis Carl wants to know, how has the change been for you to join the 88 team? I mean, it's been, it's been different. You know, I was pretty comfortable on the 5, and I love the 5, and um, but our it's been a good change. I mean, I've really enjoyed the new challenge and working with Junior and working closer with the guys on the 88 and Lance and David and, you know, all those guys, the engineers. Um, it's been good. It's, the, the Hendrick teams are really pretty similar, you know, across the board. They're structured the same. They've got, you know, good people. So it's not, it's not much different. It's just a little bit different language and sort of a few different trends. But uh, it's, it's been good, but a, a nice challenge. So. Cool. Very cool. Cricket Presley wants to know, hey, Chris, what can be done for pa faster pit stops? I tell you what, that is a great question. And it's, they're, ma they're so maxed out right now, and the competition has gotten so strong that it's every little detail is analyzed from air guns to stud length to, you know, every step those guys make is choreographed and, sure. you know, set out beforehand. So it... Um, it's just those details and Dale getting in the box right and, yep. you know, getting out right and, wor you know, working pit lane, you know, for your speed and all that kind of thing is essential. So it's, uh, it's, a, real, it's a real fine art. Like sure. There's a lot of competition right there. So details make it happen. I bet. Dale Jr. Lover 2121 wants to know what's your favorite thing about building engines? About building engines? just getting everything you can out of them, you know, and working within the rules and seeing what you can do. Um, you know, engines I build are on my own cars. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't have a ton to do with uh, our motor department as a whole, exact science for that. And, uh, you know, our tuner, Billy Davis, and then all the guys down at, you know, the uh, engine shop do a great job. But, Good. you know, it's just working with what you can get, you know, and, sure. you know, horsepower shows up quick. You know, horsepower and downforce, if you've got those two, uh, the show up quick on the stopwatch and in the finishing order. So, excellent. Edward Nash wants to know what are your hobbies. Um, I don't know. I guess my hobby is really racing right now. So, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. But outside of that, um, you know, I still like to surf when I can. Um, you know, do a little bit of rock climbing with some friends and, uh, you know, just hanging out really, trying to relax and. Cool. You know, are there good places to surf or rock climb around here? No, <laughs> rock climbing, yes. Surf, no. You got a little bit of a drive. Lake Norman's a little flat these days. So right, right. That's a definitely kind of a when I get a chance. You know, like a lot of guys go scuba diving or whatever, and you know, you go on vacation. I try to go do a little surfing. But excellent, excellent. Gary Hill wants to know: Does Junior give any input on the engineering aspect of the cars? Yeah, he um, Junior. I mean, he grew up racing and. Grew up building cars, so he's got a great, you know, seat of your pants, what the car needs, you know, uh, you know, knowledge. And so we try to, he's the biggest, you know, sensor. We've got, we go to tests and we rig these things out with, you know, all these data systems and stuff. And it's, you know, it, all that really doesn't matter if the driver in the seat doesn't think it's working. So right. luckily he's got a really good feel for what, uh, you know, these cars need as they change, what they're going to need. So, yeah, we definitely... 
in Vaaldale and uh, you know some of the specifics we'll handle but he knows what it needs and you know we try to go off that. Excellent. So. Junior Nation, you're on AmpUpThe88.com, chatting live with Chris Heroy, lead engineer of the 88 team. Keep your questions coming, enter them into the box on your screen, and uh, let's keep going here. We've got some good ones. Uh, Dances with Cat wants to know, <laughs> how will second. the new spoiler affect the car? Um, we've done some testing with it uh, in various test tracks, and it's going to be really similar. Um, NASCAR's done a good job of matching the balance. Um, we're going to pick up a little drag, but uh, we've got some tests coming up that are going to we'll be able to evaluate that. So, I think you're going to see um, uh, I think you're going to see good racing with it. I think you're going to uh, you know it, it, you're going to see people. It's changed sort of the engineering problem of these cars, so you're going to see teams try to you know go a few different directions with how they handle you know the attitude of the car and uh, how it travels through the corner. So I think there's going to be a lot of development. You're going to see some. Teams that work hard, uh, you know, excel. Uh, I think it's going to be good. We're definitely looking forward to the change. Teams that work hard, excel. You guys uh, are poised <laughs> to do very well. We're trying. I guarantee you that. So. Good deal. Uh, MJ Elliott eighty eight wants to know, Chris, are you involved in sim racing with Dale Jr.? No, no. I, I, I I'm not. He's talked about it a bunch, and it seems like every time you get a hold of him, he's in the middle of some you know racing game. But right. I probably should. I think he'd beat me pretty bad. <laughs> if that makes him feel good, I'll log on and he, everybody can stomp me. Whatever good. helps team morale. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm here to help. So, Good deal. George C. wants to know, um, can you talk about Dale Jr.'s driving style versus other drivers you've worked with? Um, Dale Jr. will, you know, is, will get in the corner. You know, he likes a pretty free race car. Um, you know, he is... Uh, it's he spends he likes to get to the throttle pretty quick uh you know he's he's good on throttle uh you know he's 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 really he drives he drives the car hard you know so you have to have setups that you know can accommodate that so it uh but yeah i'd say it's pretty aggressive but uh but good does that know? make it tougher on you no it's not bad i mean it's just you have to set up for that you know like there's big momentum guys and uh you know, each track has its own, you know, quirks of how they race. So, uh, you know, you take what test data you have, and it comes back to that feedback of what, you know, he may have to change what he's doing, you know, because the car, you know, has that spoiler change or whatever. I mean, they a big part of it is how well the driver can sort of adapt to what you're able to give him with the car. Right. These cars have definitely shrunk the box of what you can do. And, uh, like, they, the good drivers are the ones that, you know, can help us and, you know, we can reach a compromise between what they want to do and what the car can do. So, Excellent. Good deal. All right. Joe Bianco wants to know, have you ever raced yourself? Yeah, I raced a little bit. Um, some go-karts and, uh, you know, some club racing. Road, all road course stuff, though. I, I kind of came out of that end of racing, and the, you know, stock cars were definitely a new experience for me when I came from, Cal when I, you know, moved from California. But, um, you know, a little bit of racing. But, uh, you know, I was never, you know, didn't wrestle the Bush Series or anything like that. So, you know, I, was, uh, I always knew I was going to work on them. I always knew I wanted to engineer them and do that sort of thing. So, and well, that's how'd you know? I, I was always, you know, kind of a nerdy kid. And, you know, I was always science and that kind of thing. And yeah. My dad built, you know, restores cars, always helped him out um, when he loved me. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, I always knew I was going to work on them. You know, I enjoy sure. driving them, and, you know, it's, I mean, eventually, you know, it gets to the point where the cost is, you know, sort of outweighs the yeah. feasible passion. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you don't always have the choice, to, you know, right. just forever. But. Gotcha. All right, Edward Nash wants to know, do you surf anywhere on the East Coast? Yeah, I've, I've been to, uh, you know, Wilmington, down that area. Trying to get to the Outer Banks, but they're a little far away. It's the best. And then, uh, like Daytona, every time we go to Daytona, I try to get in the water. So, in a little bit. It's good. Cool. It's waves. Cool. Uh, K Fake wants to know what has been the biggest challenge going from the 5 to the 88? Um, just in learning junior, um, you know, the, the guys previous did a really good job and uh, have a lot of experience with them. So, I lean on them heavily to. You know what what they saw. Um, it's just kind of developing his baselines, and 
you know, we had that with Mark. You kind of knew when you went someplace what you would want to have. And, uh, you know, just developing that and learning, you know, what that's all about. So it, sure. that's probably been the biggest challenge is to, you know, get used to his feedback and, you know, see what, you know, his preferences are. So We've had some pretty interesting screen names here. If yeah. you had to make up your own screen name, what, what do you think it would be? <laughs> I don't know. Something involving sunshine. Maybe? Yeah, probably, you know. Shine 88 yeah. for life. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> MJ Elliott 88 wants to know, uh, Chris, how often does Dale Jr. visit the shop and help you guys out? Uh, he comes by quite a bit. Um, he, uh, you know, he called, we, they have a call in meeting after every race on Monday. You know, he calls into that. And then, you know, if he's, in ta if he's around, he'll come by. But, you know, a lot of what we need from him, you know, we can get in a variety of ways. So, but he comes by and says hi to everybody and, you know, cruise through, so it's good. Everyone likes to see him. Here's one you might like. Uh, Marge Heroy says, <laughs> hi, brother. And Catherine Heroy says, hey, Chris Pokey. Heroy rules. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sisters. Uh, yeah, it, uh, I knew. I'm glad they logged on. you got a built-in fan base. Yeah, like I said, I'm a family of six, and if there's... You know, five watching, that means nobody else is watching but my family. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard they, uh, th they can add some energy and some, some positive uh, vibes around the Oh, the yeah. Shop. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, they've been to some races. Some and some races. Uh, hey, cat or hey, Pookie. <laughs> 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 yeah, they, uh, they enjoy it. They live in New York, so I think the racing scene is quite a bit, you know, a little different than what they're used to in Manhattan. So. Cool. Yeah, well, I think we've got a lot more than five or six tuned in. Uh, Junior Nation's come out in full force today, so kudos to you guys. Um, let's jump back to uh, Taylor Woodward wants to know, hey, Chris, do you love what you do? Yeah, I mean, you can't do this and not love it. So, um, you know, it's tough on, you know, your personal life, but it, uh, it's also really rewarding. And, uh, you know, it's just great to work in a team. And, like, I've had a lot of friends, you know, get out of racing, and uh, they say the thing they miss the most is the camaraderie and the team part of it. And that would, you know, that's definitely... A big part of why I'm here, so cool. you know the competition and the rest of it. But yeah, I love my job. You can't do it and not love it. So, along those lines, um, John Walco wants to know how would someone go about becoming a NASCAR driver that's 25 years old and doesn't have any prior racing experience? What kinds of things could could they? I tell you, a lot of people have gotten opportunities. You know, kind of just working on teams, and then um, like you see it quite a bit in like the trucks and the um, you know and in in the Bush Garage and, you know, those people even make it up to the Cup Garage, but just get involved, you know, get get on a team, you know, get working on them and, you know, keep keep your driving resume current, drive what you can and, you know, scratch for every opportunity, so. Sure. 88 Junior Fan Go 88 wants to know, if you were not an engineer, what would you like to do? I don't know. That's a really great question. <laughs> Doesn't sound like you thought about it much no, you've always I haven't. known you wanted to go. Yeah, this has kind of been the plan, you know, for me for a long time and it's what I enjoy doing. So um, I don't know. That's a good question. I should probably figure something out in case I ever get <laughs> removed from racing. So <laughs> we'll see. Well with your track record I think uh, you're doing all right. Thanks. Uh, Edward Nash wants to know do you design new setups or go off old data? You always try to go off old but everyone's getting quicker so you constantly evolve and uh, you know we have a lot of data and that's a great thing about Henrik is you've got you know a seven post that's really in tune with uh, what's going on at the racetrack and you've got a simulation program that's all in-house and you know it's given us great consistency so and you've got a lot of people working on them and you've got that many smart people working on them you've got a lot of data coming in so there's always new things to try and new concepts and uh, you know part of my job I feel is to try to look at all of those and you know, create you know with the other engineers on the 88, uh, you know, a cohesive game plan for Lance to yay or nay, you know. To sure. And then you know, but yeah, it's constantly evolving. So cool. Adam Teague wants to know, um, studying to become a me mechanical engineer, any suggestions to becoming a Hendrick employee? Um, I yeah, just uh, I, it's hard. You know, I felt very fortunate to get in, and you know, I knew somebody. And I, I came through in college, and uh, I dropped off some resumes at Hendrick and did not get called back. So right. it was, uh, you know, it was, you know, just just get involved, and you know, if you can't start at Hendrick, start where you can get good experience, and yep. try to be, you know, whatever series you're at, you know, with the best team you can, and 
competing in the front and you know using the technology learning the technology and uh, you know a lot of we hire a lot of guys now like out of school and they're incredibly talented and you know have uh, just keep you know at your school just keep working the you know the FSAE stuff and that puts you in contact with people in the industry and you know get get with them and use their technology and uh, you know inroads and you know you, you know you work hard to get where you want to be cool Jake B wants to know do you have any good stories about Dale Jr. that most people don't know about <laughs> um, I, I haven't known him that long to be honest with you it's been you know three four months so right I don't think I, I don't think I have the best so right. I should probably defer to someone who knows him better maybe <laughs> we'll come back to you later in the season and we'll ask you that question again yeah yeah I'm sure that'll <laughs> I'll change. get in trouble later in the yeah. season. <laughs> just worry about stuff can't now. give away too much <laughs> yeah all right um, TJ Miller wants to know um, how old exactly were you when you got into the sport um, I first went around my junior year of college to uh, uh, truck teams to try to get involved um, that was really when I decided to go kind of the NASCAR you know route and uh, I was 20 you know two something like that I'm 32 now so 10 years later I guess so. cool looks like we've got a lot of questions from uh, Junior Nation coming in with just five minutes to go and a um, bunch of the questions look like they're about your van Pe more people <laughs> want to know what, what oh, the deal man. is my mom is not gonna be happy if I talk about that van <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it got it on eBay, you know, it's where all great things come from. Yeah. So, you know, it's cheap and uh, just an old disco van. Right. You know? It actually, I, it was blown up. I thought the motor was blown out of it um, a few weeks ago, so I sent it home in Indiana. Dad's kind of taking a look at it for me while I'm busy. So. Nice. The Bud van is dead right now, so. <laughs> oh, man. Got to bring that thing back. Yeah. Dale Jr. Lover 2121 wants to know, do you like going to all the different tracks or would you rather stay in the shop? I like going to the tracks because you really get the satisfaction of, you know, seeing everyone's hard work uh, come to fruition, and you know, you see how it matches your competition. Because you're always wondering, you know, well, I think it'll work. I think it'll work, and then to see it in application is the real vindication, in my opinion. So it's, I really enjoy going to the racetrack. So. Cool. Brian Hanna's got a good question. Uh, Chris, do you feel that there are improvements from the 88 between this year and last year? I think there's a lot of improvements through the whole shop um, and I feel that the two teams are working together really well I mean I still have all my relationships on the five as well as Kevin Holstein and uh, you know it's uh, I, I think it's I think it's an improvement as a group and I think that group is just starting to kind of show what it's capable of you know Daytona qualifying was a great you know a really special moment you know yeah. in, in your race career when you know you can make big changes and it comes together and yeah. you know you have that you know at track vindication so sure. it was a great day for us and I think that's just the beginning of what you know these two teams can accomplish very cool yeah you know what you're doing is working it's got to feel really good yeah I wish it worked a little better <laughs> last weekend but you know you'll have that similar question um, Eilis Carl wants to know everyone says there's an open book at Hendrick how much of that do you use on the 88 we use all of it and that's really the key in you know determining new direction and uh, correlation we use it all and you know they've got us from where I started Hendrick to where it is now is you know 180 degrees different I mean it really is we've got you know information sharing structures uh, you know meetings uh, you know there's really at, at every level of administration and engineering even you know mechanic and even building you know building the cars down on the floor there's you know so much more communication so it really is you know, I think a great model for an open environment in terms of information. Excellent. Uh, so what they say is true. Yeah, it works. You know. Cool. Navy 88 dude wants to know, hey Chris, is there any one racetrack that Dale and Lance have circled on the calendar coming up? Well, there's a pretty much a big circle around from here till uh, Richmond, for, for to the chase. And, okay. uh, just around all of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's really a, just a big circle. Right. So. Um, but you know, you always, always want to win the big ones. You know, the Brickyards, Daytona, um, you know that kind of thing. So sure, you, you always you say you don't put special effort into them, but you want to win them so bad they always seem to have a little more effort. But you know, all of them are important. All right, Renee Goodwin Hero asks a question. <laughs> um, hey, Renee, do you want <laughs> to be a crew wife. chief? Oh, it is <laughs> yeah. excellent. Uh, someday, I'd love to be a crew chief. You know, I think it's a you know a great position and. Uh, 
you know, I think, like I said, a big part of why I'm a part of this business is the team aspect. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, someday, we'll see. Cool. Very cool. Uh, TJ Miller um, uh, asks, um, what equipment helps you most at the racetrack? Uh, we have a, our simulation is really top notch. And, uh, you know, the guys at R&D and Dave McClain work really hard on that. And uh, it's, uh, that's, that's probably, we lean on that really heavily, especially in the last few years. And, uh, you know, so I guess it'd be my computer, which is not that exciting. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, just uh, two more questions for you. Um, what are your thoughts on the splitter? Edward Nash wants to know. Um, it's just uh, another thing to work around. It's a rule, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's just part of the car. You yep. know, doesn't matter. Part of the car. Cool. And uh, final question: Next week, um, we've got David Bryant coming yeah. on. Anything you want to tell us about David? Um, uh, any questions you'd want us to ask him? <laughs> David didn't throw me under the bus for doing this, so I'm not going to throw him under the bus. All right, he, he can come in, sit down, just like I did. So good deal. I think you guys are going to have a little something on TV this week, where you guys might be seen doing a little something. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure what. Okay. That. There's always something going on around here. So. All right. Good deal. Well, Junior Nation, um, great, great job as always. Um, this is our third week at AmpUpThe88.com, doing live chats with different members of the 88 team. Um, you know, this is the place that you guys come to amp up for the race each week. Um, the turnout has been fantastic. We've got tons of people logging in for the signature sweeps. Uh, a lot of people coming into these live chats, checking out the uh, exclusive new videos, um, checking out TJ's Twitter. Um, so keep coming back. Uh, keep submitting your ideas uh, in these chat boxes telling us how you'd like us to make improvements on this site because uh, this is your home uh, and we want to make this the best possible racing site on the web. Uh, again next week, Wednesday, March uh, 10th at 1230, we've got David Bryant, the car chief for the 88 team. And uh, with that, Chris, just yeah, want to thank you. Thanks for having you. me. And, uh, Pleasure. We'll see you soon. 